Hello, welcome. This is question three for um, June 2014 uh, AQHC3 paper. Now, the first part um, just tells us to differentiate um, x squared plus 1 all to the power of 5 over 2. So, as because it's in a bracket, we just use, you guessed it, the bracket rule. So, I don't know, quite intelligent, like Dora the Kids films or whatever. Don't know why that sprung to mind. But anyway, so what we do is we remove the power, we take one from the power, times that, so 5, five over 2 times x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2, put that in square brackets, and then we times that by the differential of what's inside brackets, that's x squared plus 1, uh, so that just becomes 2x. Okay, so therefore we simplify this down, now that's 2, so we're going to get rid of this 2, so I'm just going to write it in as many steps as I can. So that's 10x brackets x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 over 2. Cancel it down just to get 5x brackets x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. Now we could have just wrote that last step and skipped out this middle one, but I just wanted to show you where we were going from that. Okay, so hopefully that's been... That's nice and simple, nothing too uh, difficult in that one. But we're going to be using that, so uh, don't imagine that's just gone, because uh, generally they wouldn't ask you a question just out of the blue, something like that, unless it's related to something else in the question. And this is 3A part 1, it gives you a bit of a clue saying, Oi, pleb, this is, we're going to use this in the next question, so don't forget it. Otherwise, you're not like it's going to disappear or anything, but you know. So anyway, the next question says we're given uh, we are given this uh, equation of a lot, equation so y equals e to the power of two x brackets x squared plus one to the power five over two. Now this is weird because this part the x the x squared plus one to the power five over two is what we had up there. Now we're asked to differentiate this. Now, however, we can't just simply differentiate the whole thing as one. Because what this is secretly saying, uh, it doesn't show us obviously because maths is snidey and um, sneaky and you know wants you to fail, as everything else doesn't like, but just got to push it out of the way and say, you know what, I'm going to succeed. Um, life lesson and the maths answer, have, you can't get better than this. Anyway, so it's e to the power of 2x times uh, x squared plus 1 to the power of 5 over 2. So therefore, what we do is we break this down into u and v. So you use the product rule for differentiation. So therefore, u is going to be e to the 2x. And u dashed, or the differential of u, or d of dx, whatever you want to call it. But I'm just going to write u dashed because I just want to confuse you. It's going to be 2e to the 2x because you differentiate the power and times that by the whole thing. So differential of 2x is 2 times that by e. 2e to the 2x is 2 to the e 2x. v, well, v is this x squared plus 1 to the power of 5 over 2. We worked out what v dashed was. Now, you could have you could do it again, but it's pointless, because you should get the same answer. Uh, we got 5x brackets x squared plus 1 to the power 3 over 2. Now, it is going to become a bit messy when we do the differential a bit, but this is math. There's nothing that's going to be easy. So, therefore, dy dx... Um, it doesn't matter which one around you do this, you could do uv dashed plus vu dashed, but I'm going to do vu dashed plus uv dashed, because that's the way around they have it in the quotient rule, and you need to know that. Um, anyway, but it doesn't matter. So vu dashed, so v, uh, put both of these in square brackets, so x squared plus 1 to the power of 5 over 2, and we're times that by... Um, u dashed, which is 2e to the 2x, and square brackets, plus u, which is e to the 2x, times the differential of x squared plus 1 to the power of 5 over 2, which becomes 5x brackets, x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. So that's why it does get a little bit messy, but hopefully you're following this. I'm sure as hell I'm not. Uh, Yeah, so that so this just becomes uh, 2e to the 2x times that. Can't really expand this out, so it's just 2e to the 2x plus 
times x squared plus 1 to the 5 over 2. And you can't really do anything else with this apart from um, 5x e to the 2x brackets x squared plus 1 to the power 3 over 2. You can't really simplify that, so you just leave it as that. But obviously it's not just going to want you to leave it there. As I said, this is maths, but weirdly enough, so I only want you to fail. So find the value of dy dx when x equals 0. Okay, so we just put some x to be 0 in. So 2e to the 0, um, 0 squared plus 1 to the power of 5 over 2. So plus 5 times 0, e to the 0 times 0 squared plus 1 to the power 3 over 2. Now you don't need to calculate to work that out, it's just going to be 2. Because anything to the power 0 is 1, so um, 2 times 1, 2. This is going to end up being 1, so it's just 2 times 1, that's 2. And then because this has got something times 0, we just ignore that, so it's just 2. It's basic maths and advanced maths in one question. Pretty good this. Um, okay, so that's... Um, Part pre part two, as I said, now I'm gonna because I, I like to use as much board space as possible, um, just so I could do these. Oh, I'll give it a pause a minute, so just so I could put my music on for a few seconds uh, and pretend to be doing something important. Okay, so I'll do the same thing, copy it down, and uh, we'll get into the next part of the question. Uh, you don't really need to, um, because this now we're going into a different part, you don't need any of this information on the board, um, so. As long as you've got all this information, that's how I would lay it out. I'd write what uv, v dash, and u dash are, um, as I had done there, weirdly enough. Uh, that's the way I'd lay it out, which would be a lot smaller. Um, although, saying that, if I had that amount of paper, I would still use it like that. Uh, so, whatever, using plants resources, why not? So, anyway, that's uh, part one and two, question three. Uh, we're going to go into part B now. Um, so, I'll just give you a second to copy that down while I ramble on. Um, so, we'll see you in the next part. So as you can see, um, all the bits uh, of uh, rubbish on the board there have been um, wiped off. And I'm suddenly going to have uh, changed tops on this because uh, well, that's a different day, if I'm honest. Um, going out board, ended up doing some other work. Uh, so that's why I just uh, got a backup Will over there who got tired. And then we got Will B to come on and uh, present the next bit. So I'm Will B. Um, anyway, so what we're doing here is, uh, is kind of, you can almost think of a different question, but it's not uh, related to uh, the previous question in any great detail. Um, although we are still going to be differentiating, so we're still using our differential rules, um, but this is uh, a different one. So, Okay, so I've written the key bits of information on the board there, if you can't bother reading the question. Uh, we're given... Uh, that y is equal to 4x take 1 over x squared plus 1 uh, and we're told to find uh, dy dx in the form uh, ax squared plus bx plus c now that might be negative ax squared or it might be hmm. shame if it would be how, uh, how crazy would that be if I got the question uh, give you a little bit of a hint there so as I said it's not specific um, it doesn't have to be all positive you know um, well, that would be quite good but anyway it doesn't matter just want it in that format. And then to tell it what A, B and C are, so you don't need to bother about that. Uh, when dy dx equals zero. Now that is a key bit, otherwise we wouldn't have it in this form. Okay? Right, so let's kick off. So, uh, ignoring this the, the second bit here, uh, we're told to find when dy dx is zero. Now, this doing this is the same method as if we didn't have these bits of information, so you can kind of ignore them if you get, oh, what's A and B? It doesn't matter, just work it through it as you would naturally work through it. However, it doesn't work for every question that, so don't do what I do, just assume you know the answer to the question and what it's asking before you answer it. Uh, you know, I'm just a genius, it works for me, obviously. Uh, no, not really. So, anyway, um, differentiating y equals, so we're differentiating a fraction. Okay, so what we're going to need is uh, our quotient. Now, our quotient rule says uh, when y equals u over v, we're told, uh, therefore, dy dx is equal to, um, so all over v squared, 
And it's um, sorry, I'm just going to go up ahead. You be dashed. You be dashed. Sorry, uh, and so it's V U dash take U V dashed. Sorry, I always remember the take the bit that take U V dash. So I, I always work backwards because it's the other way around. Uh, just because my mind's really confusing. So we want that to equal zero, and obviously this V. Now you could almost, if you if you wanted to be um, lazy, uh, isn't it? Obviously, none of you are. You could just. You wouldn't have to do this v squared bit on the bottom. You could just go because uh, v times u dash take u v dash. You're going to times it both by v squared to get rid of this v squared to get it in this kind of form. You could do that straight away if you wanted to. However, I wouldn't recommend it for this question, uh, and it will become apparent why we don't. It's okay, I'm contradicting myself there. Anyway, so the first thing I would do is any other question. Write down what u v. Uh, u dashed and what v dashed are. So we could have been a little table over here. Uh, so we said u is the top figure, so it's 4x take 1. And if we differentiate 4x take 1, u dashed, we just get 4. Uh, v is x squared plus 1. Uh, and then v dashed just becomes 2x. Now it's quite um, easy just to, because you're in the C4 exam, you're not really paying attention uh, to C1 stuff because you know this, I'm not thick. Uh, some people put just x or 1. So, it's careful, it's 2x, remember. Don't need to send that to you, because obviously, you're intelligent people. That shows why you're watching my video. Because I'm not that intelligent, so... Anyway, it doesn't matter, just insult the viewer, quite wrong. So, what we're going to do now is put it in this um, formula. So, right, dy dx, and all we have to do now is be dead lazy and just write in what um, each thing is. So, uh, v times u dash. So, I always look at it as doing horizontals, really. Uh, I was looking at it, it's not crushing out my answers all. So v times u dashed, so v is x squared plus 1, and that is times 4. You could do them in separate square brackets really. So x squared plus 1 times 4, uh, and the uv dash, so that's 4x take 1 times 2x. Oh look, we're going to have an x squared here. Oh, and it's going to be probably negative. But it not might be it is over v squared. Now, as I said, you can ignore this if you want in any other question, but not in this question. So I've kind of double questioned it. Anyway, so x squared plus one squared. Now I wouldn't expand that out. Um, I shouldn't because it obviously be comparable with the question. So first thing I would do is see what any sane person would do and expand the brackets. Now you could go straight to cancel them down straight away, you know, if you think you're um, some maths geek. But, um, because I'm not, uh, obviously that's great reassurance for you watching the question, um, I just expand it and then simplify it down so you don't make any mistakes. So if you do make a mistake, you can see where you've gone wrong. So 4 times x squared, 4x squared, uh, plus 4, and you put that in the square brackets, take that away from 4x times 2x, that's 8x squared, uh, take sorry, 2x, my mind's gone there, over, again, I'm going to expand it, x squared plus 1 squared, okay, so what we do is we simplify this down on top, so you could keep writing dy dx equals this, or you just put equals, um, so obviously, uh, it's just going to be 4x squared, take 8x, now I'm going to group together the x squareds and the x's or whatever, um, take 2x, but because this is take away minus 2x, you actually add 2x, so, and then nothing take away 4, so it's just plus 4, and then remember, it's all over x squared plus 1. Now when you cancel this down, then I'd make it equal to 0, um, just because I'm not being awkward. So anyway, that's squared on the bottom, so I did that to see if you're paying attention, so, so it's going to be negative 4x squared. Uh, plus 2x plus 4. That's over x squared plus 1 or square. And that is equal to 0. So what we do now is, um, well actually, yeah, it could have just made it equal. could have just done the top bit equal to 0. Actually, I thought I was going to need some improvisation here. But no. So just time those sides by x squared plus 1 squared. So see why I didn't need to expand that. It would have been a waste of time. 
but congratulations to those of you who I'm sure just ignored my thing and expanded it anyway. You're the kind of people that I like, um, because, you yeah, know, rebellious kids were. Anyway, so uh, putting my weirdness to one side, let's continue with this maths. So what we're just left with there for is minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now what I did without telling you there, which probably should have done, is kept my eye on this, because it wanted it in a, this kind of formula. That's why I didn't factorise this and go, oh, well, maybe then we can take out a factor. Because it's not asking for that. It's simply asking to have it in this formula, which we've got over here. So that's why I didn't factorise it. It kept my eye, kept relating to the question, well, what forms is it wanting? And going, well, OK, is this next step going to take it in a totally different direction? Um, I mean, it's probably called being paranoid, but whatever. So anyway, this is in the formula one. So all we have to do now is state what individual things are. OK, so A is minus 4, B is 2, C is 4, whatever. So that, that is your answer to the question. OK, nothing, doesn't ask you for anything else. Take any further than that. Um, as I say, hopefully that was uh, some help. So that's the end of question 3. Um, uh, you probably see why I didn't include that in another question, because I would have made a complete hash of trying to cram all that in. Um, by the way, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully it's been of some help. And uh, we'll see you in question four. I mean, I didn't need to say it at the start, did I? Anyway.